In this video, we're going to be integrating Firepower with Cisco Threat Response, or CTR for short. If you don't know what CTR is, it's a way to integrate various Cisco security products together to allow you to detect, investigate, and remediate incidents faster. If you work in a SOC or incident response team, it's definitely something that will make your life easier. The even better news is that it's not a separate license that you buy from Cisco, but something you can enable if you already own or purchase certain Cisco security products. Currently with CTR, you can integrate AMP for Endpoints, Umbrella, Cisco Email Security, ThreatGrid, Firepower, and third-party products via API. As of version 6.4, Firepower is one of the more recent products that allows integration with CTR. It's a pretty straightforward configuration, as you'll see in this video. To start out this configuration, I'm going to navigate to Cisco Threat Response at visibility.amp.cisco.com. Next, we'll want to enable the module for Firepower, so we'll navigate to Modules on the top right. To enable the module, I'll click on the Configure Modules button, and from the drop-down menu, I'll choose Firepower. As you can see here, there's no API key or anything to add, it just lets me name it, and I'll leave the name at Firepower since that's pretty intuitive. So now that we've configured the Firepower module, let's click on Devices in the left-hand pane to see if our Firepower devices are showing up in CTR yet. It looks like CTR still doesn't see our Firepower devices, so I'm going to click on the Manage Devices button to dig into this more. In order to have previously licensed your FTD devices, you should already have a Cisco Smart License account. CTR will use that Cisco Smart License account to link your registered FTD devices to it. To log in and link your account, you'll click on the gear icon on the top left-hand corner. In my case, I've already signed in and linked the account, so I'm going to skip this step. The reason I don't have anything showing up is because I don't have any devices registered to my Smart License account. I'm going to click on the Cloud Services tab and enable Cisco Threat Response. This allows me to use registered devices for CTR and accept security events and observations from res registered devices. I'm going to also enable eventing so I can collect and view events in the cloud. Since I currently have an unregistered FMC instance, let's swing over to our FMC and I'll register it to my Smart License account. I'm going to navigate to System, Licenses, and Smart Licenses. I'm going to click on the Register button and enter the token I received from my Smart Licensing portal. After we click Register with a token, it usually takes about 30 seconds to maybe a couple minutes to register with the Smart Licensing Cloud, so I'm going to go ahead and speed up the video here. Okay, it looks like it's finishing up here, so I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the correct licenses are allocated to our device. So I'm going to navigate to Devices and then Device Management and edit my FTD device. And under the Device tab, I'm going to click on the pencil icon to edit the licenses. And I'm going to make sure that it's got malware, threat, and URL filtering, just so I have it fully licensed. After the licensing has been changed, we don't have to redeploy anything to the FTD device. Let's go ahead and go back to the Security Services Exchange for CTR and refresh our device list. So right off the bat, our FMC is showing up because we've registered it to the Smart License account, and usually it'll take maybe a minute or so for the FTD device to start showing up since we just assigned the licenses to it. If we swing back to our Firepower Management Center and navigate to System, Licenses, and Smart Licenses, we can see that the licenses have been allocated for the FTD device, so it's just a matter of a minute or so until this FTD device shows up. So I wouldn't worry about it if you don't see it right away. It might take a minute or two. So now that we're seeing the device in our Security Services Exchange and we've configured it to accept events, we're still not done. We need to make sure that the FMC is configured to send events to the cloud. To do so, we'll navigate to System and Integrations. I'm going to enable the Cisco Cloud Event Configuration and then have the FMC send connection events, file and malware events, and intrusion events to the cloud. After I enable these services, I'm going to click Save. So now that the FMC is configured, we'll want to verify that events are being sent to the cloud. On the Security Services Exchange, I'm going to click on the Events tab. 
There are some leftover events from an earlier test that I did, so let's just take note that there were six events prior to me configuring this. I currently have a test intrusion rule set up in my Firepower to generate events on pings, so I'm going to RDP to a server and start pinging an endpoint on the other side of my FTD. This should start setting off intrusion events, which should be reported to the cloud. New events usually take a few seconds to show up in the FMC, so let's navigate over to Analysis, Intrusions, and Events to see those events. We can see here that there are some events showing up for ICMP traffic. Let's go back to our Security Services Exchange window and check to see if any new events are showing up there yet. Looks like it just increased to 8 events, and let's refresh again. We can see 10 events now showing up from Firepower. Navigating back to the Devices tab, I should now see my FTD device along with my FMC. To make things a little easier for me, I'm going to change the name of Firepower to FTD by clicking on the Pencil button and editing my device. It looks like everything is showing up well here in the Security Services Exchange, so let's close this window and test it out in Cisco Threat Response. I'm going to click on the Investigate tab and enter the IP address that my server is pinging to see if the events are showing up in CTR. We can see here that according to CTR, this IP address has been seen with two targets with 10 sightings and observed by one module. If I click on the sightings, it'll give me a list and details of my events on the right-hand side. We can see that these events were detected from the Firepower module, which egress zone, which ingress zone, the event type, and a description of the event. Clicking module on the top right hand corner will show me which module saw this IP address. Of course it's just Firepower since that's the only module I currently have configured. And with that, that ends our video on configuring Firepower and CTR integration. Thank you so much for watching.